for doing this setup. It's okay. We're, we're gonna we can edit the beginning out. It, it doesn't matter. I just this is stuff for the record anyway. So before we um start, so because Ann Langley isn't here, she's our chair. Someone needs to be the acting chair. Um, I'm gonna because Barbara's got some voice issues. So I'm gonna suggest Michelle, you do it because you're the most veteran. Of the sure. Barbara and Barbara you know what? I can't her. hear you, Tom. Yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing you too. Yeah. yeah. It's my Bill Chin. Everyone, everyone <laughs> stare at Bill Chin this right now. This is like his Why third laptop. Hmm. All right. But I was bad, Bill. Now he's on his third. I'm only on my second. It happened in cabinet again, Bill. So I said, everyone, everyone text Bill and tell him this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to get new laptops on order. So they're hard um, to come back. So somebody, need, somebody needs to be, so because Anne Langley isn't going to, we don't think it's going to be here. So someone needs to be the, uh, the chair, the acting chair for the meeting. If, if Barbara is the most senior, but uh, Barbara has some volume issues. So Barbara, can you hear us and can you talk? No, see, you're because if, if you're not, I would, on. I would just suggest that Michelle do it for the I mean, you guys need to take a vote, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I need to hear their vote. So, Michelle, are you are you sure? Yeah, roll call. Yeah, so so I think you should start the meeting, and then the first thing you need to do is is determine you know, take a vote that Michelle will, will be the app will run the actual meeting in Ann Langley's absence. Can you guys all hear me? Yep. Okay. So I think we're ready, right? Yes. Michelle, why don't you say okay. let's start the meeting? And, okay, so uh, let's start the meeting. All right, it's 12 11. Okay. 12 11 mm -hmm. on Thursday, December. And I think so, someone should make a motion and then a second to make Michelle the, the acting chair of the meeting. If, if everybody's okay with that, that's up to you guys. Somebody? <laughs> Alice is on mute. Barbara, can you make a motion? <laughs> Alice? <laughs> Alice, you're muted. Alice, we see you talking, but we don't know. <laughs> we can't hear you. Maybe she, she thinks she's on a call with someone else or something because she's doing a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess technically, Michelle, you can make the motion yourself because okay? okay. you're not the chair. I'll yet. make so, a yeah. motion that I'll, I'll be the chair of this meeting. Barbara, can you second that? Okay. Okay, hand wave is a second. <laughs> right, and all, all those in favor, you can you can do a thumbs up or wave or hands up. Barbara, you want to okay. vote? Okay. Beautiful. Two votes wins. Okay, Michelle, you're in charge. Okay, great. All right, so let's let's start the meeting. Um, we'll take attendance. Um, Michelle Wigzell, Barbara, Marianne, Bill, Rena, Tom, and Alice. Okay. We have a quorum. Yeah. Uh, so do, do we go to the general public now? Is that what's? Oh, uh, you gotta approve the minutes. Yeah, do you have the, do you have the agenda? Yes, yep. Okay, yeah, just just follow one to two, go down through yeah. the agenda. Okay, uh, so we'll approve the minutes of last meeting on September 2nd. Um, does anyone have a motion to approve? Okay, so Barbara. Uh, and Alice, do you want a second? Alice, wave your hand if you're seconding. Alice? Is she at another meeting? <laughs> I, I think she might be. <laughs> Can someone call her? I am sure she is paying She's great off attention. Mute now. Alex, oh. Alex, can you hear her? Alice. Yes, I can okay. hear you. Oh, there you are. Did I lose you guys? 
You were yeah, on mute. Were on mute. We oh, I hear just put it on mute. Said. I put it on mute for background noise. But if you want me to stay constantly on mute, that's fine too. I'm sorry. So, so we were have you a... talking to us, or were you talking to somebody else? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear all that? Sorry. No, we didn't no, hear. We just saw mute. you talking. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Talking to my chief of staff. Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, so we just need a I... to approve the meeting. Um, the minutes from last meeting and Barbara uh, made the motion. Uh, can you second the motion? Alice, that's you. Yes. Can you not hear me? Yeah, we just need you to second the motion. Oh, sorry. Can you? I'm going to put my voice on it. Yes, I second the motion. Hold on. Check the audio. Okay, um, so there, our next order is from the general public. Any comments? Is anyone in still? Uh, we do. We do have somebody. So if, uh, <clears throat> if anyone from public would like to speak, you can press the raise hand button or press star nine if you're on the phone. And it doesn't look like anyone wishes to comment. Okay, so our uh, next order is new business. Uh, and we need to request to advertise, test, and recruit for the following positions. Uh, first one is admin series one, two, and three. Uh, it says we've exhausted a third of the current list and requesting to advertise, test, and recruit. So, Marion, maybe you want to do 30 seconds for uh, Alice probably doesn't understand the world, what we're talking about right now. So about what we do with the admin series. Sure. Okay. So what we do is we have um, three grades of admin support levels, one, two, and three. And we also have higher wage grades, which is included in this hiring process, which is an F and a double F. So what we do is we run one test a year until we exhaust it. And we, what we do is we have some type of um, computer online testing um, um, core tests with components of Word, Excel, Outlook. Um, proofreading and, and so forth. And what we do is we usually test the top five, uh, 50 candidates. And um, if there are higher positions of a higher wage, which I mentioned the F and double F, we do additional testing. And then sometimes we uh, may test them with experience and training or set up a criteria if they have, let's say it's in the police department, they have experience in the police department um, or if like in the tax collector's office, if they have experience working in the tax assessor's office, tax collector, and those jobs are vacant, we would um, give them additional points. Okay, um, do you have any questions regarding that, Alice? Please. Seems simple enough. <laughs> not as easy to probably execute, but something. No, it's definitely not. So but in essence, we, we took, in essence, this is going to be important a little bit later too. In essence, we took, not we, it was before me, but we took <laughs> all the, we used to do separate testing for all the different clerical positions. Now we do one massive test for the majority of the clericals, and then we pick from that list. And so, well, so we've exhausted, we believe we've exhausted this list. So we're asking you to kill that list and then allow us to start again on a new overall admin series test. That's essentially what we're asking right now. Okay. Okay, so um, do we have to make a request to advertise, test and recruit for those three positions? Yes, what you need to do is decide what the weights will be. Will it be 100% based on the core components, Word, Excel, Outlook, proofreading? Usually our de department decides on what the 
core components are, but you have to um, decide what the weights will be. If it will be 100% testing, 80% testing, maybe 20% work, you know, experience and training. Right. Um, what did we do this year, Marianne? Um, what we did was, I'm actually looking at the minutes. It was 100% core components of online proficiency assessment examination established by the civil service department. We will test the first 50 qualified candidates, which includes internal candidates to apply. Uh, certain positions may require additional testing, which may include experience and training. Okay, and then of the top percentile, if there's a higher wage grade, they may be subject to additional testing. So you can vote on what I just said and I can you know, incorporate that into the minutes if you'd like. Just a question, are these all external positions or any of these internal positions? These are all internal positions, but it's open to everyone inside, people inside and out can apply for them. Because I know in the past we've done some, um, we've waited in like em employee performance history and things like that. I don't, I don't know if that's something. Yeah, that is for more specialized jobs. Like if we're looking for a building official, we would base it more on their experience and training. Mm -hmm. Because this is an admin series, you know, we want to make sure they have the basic Word, Excel, proof reading, proof reading um, and plus we have 50 people, so it would be more difficult to, you know, rate them individually. And when you get to outside people, it's very difficult to figure out work history stuff with right. outsiders. So right, since we're exactly. mixing outsiders, it yeah. kind of would put insiders at a disadvantage, and so we wouldn't mm -hmm. want to do that. Yeah. Um, the although it's been 100% in the past, I just I mean you might want to think about adding a component about experience because I mean I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to have a piece of the outside experience as part of the calculation. But with the admins, really, you want to rely a lot on the test too. Yeah. I mean, with the experience. Are you talking about municipal experience, private experience, experience related to the position? You know, there, you have to set up some type of criteria if you were to do that. In the past, have we, have we done a 100% test? Yeah, it's usually, that's the way it's been. Okay. And has that, my last question is, has that worked out when we've done it that way? Um, yes. And as a matter of fact, I'll give you a perfect example. We, most of our, it has been 100% experience in training, but what we did with um, a higher position, for example, in EMS, mm -hmm. we uh, um, gave people more points if they had EMS experience, if they were certified in, um, you know, in, of uh, the, you know, the Red Cross, if they um, were in an EMT, if they had any type of EMS experience because of the type of job, you know, you can get someone with an injury that walks right into the EMS building because they're so frantic that they, they you know, if they live nearby and, and it's happened and you have to act quickly. So, you know, they were looking for someone with that type of experience. And so what we did was, you know, one of the, the scorers, we would just tack on an additional, um, like five, 10 points, additional scoring. So we could do that with these jobs as well. So if, they, if Mary, would they have to give approval for that or we, could, we have the power to do that? Um, we could put it in, in the minutes, like I have it here that, um, let's see. So, so in other words, the, the commission could give us the flexibility to add extra points for technical skills if yes. needed by the job. Right. I think that would be good. That would be helpful yeah. if you would do that for us. I, and I think that is for the higher ranked jobs, the ones that, like I said, in EMS, 
you know, we have um, an office manager, the, the pension administrator, things like that, jobs where if they have pension experience or, um, and, it, and they're in the finance department, things like that. So yeah, I mean, the, the board could motion to um, designate the amount of points, say five points, 10 points at their discretion. So do you think we should do something like 100% uh, test score, but then added points for up to 10 points for technical skills, something like that? I think that'd be, I mean, that, if you're asking the opinion of me, that's my, I would think that'd be perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I make a motion for 100% on the test score, but then added points available up to 10 points for technical, technical. skills. Okay. All right, and then I'll just add in everything else that I said that will run a test for one year or after one third of the list is exhausted. It'll be 100% based on core components established by civil service. We'll do the first 50 qualified. And then I'll add that there will be up to 10 points for um, technical skills or experience. <coughs> That's what I was going to ask, like experience and technical, because mm -hmm. you're you're right that that's a big piece of it. Some people are great test takers, and others are have fabulous backgrounds, and especially in this like, work environment, you want the best candidates possible. Okay. Does someone want to make a motion? Give me a second. I think Michelle made a motion. Yep, I made the motion to someone. Okay. Oh, Michelle. Barbara, second. I Any make a motion second? that we agree. Okay, Barbara, second. Alice? I agree. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. And that's for all three of those positions, correct? <laughs> Yeah, and that also includes any higher wage, the F and double F positions. So it would, I'll put that in the um, minutes. All righty. Okay, so do we move on to the next? Yep. Piece, which is establish the dates for the civil service Civil service meetings for 2020. Oh, no, no, nope, nope. there's two more jobs. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was what we were going to go for the three, for all three of those open positions. No, they're going to, they're, no. the second one's going to be a little bit different. Okay. All right. That's the admin. Okay. So the second job is the administrative land use and development clerk. And we're requesting to advertise, test, and recruit for this position. So this is, um, I'll take this one. So th this, is, this is a job that used to be in the admin series test. And that's why this is the reason. We're losing you again, Tom. <laughs> Bill Chen. Um, <laughs> so the, sorry, you will get to see me really close up. Okay. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, now we can. Mm -hmm. Good news is my hair isn't purple even when I'm close up. Bye. Um, <laughs> I have to say, by the way, Alice just texted me. Is her hair purple? Oh, no. Stop it. Stop. Honest, no, true. I don't I, know what's going on. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because at work, um, my hair was blue, and people asked me if I was really that devoted to the brand. So, um, <laughs> so funny. No, so before you got on, we were saying, I don't know if it's the lighting in here because I had a meeting this morning and my hair was brown like normal, but now all of a sudden I, we got on and I was like, is my hair purple? Purple. Yeah. For the record. Oh, <laughs> For so some anyways, reason, the admin is looking gray. I don't know. It must be the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I usually have jet black full head of hair, but it's just Zoom. It's the worst. Um, uh -huh. Anyways, the admin is administrative uh -huh. land use development clerk used to be in the, um, the full admin series test. And Rena and I talked in because Rena is going to talk to you about the position and because of the high level of technical need for the job, um, it's very, it's kind of very different. It does have clerical elements to it, no question. But um, 
but she but she requested that we remove it from the admin series. So so I've talked to the union and we've we've agreed with the union to do that. To be honest, we're still working on the dollar amount with the union right now. I'm meeting with them tomorrow, but um, they have agreed to the job description and to remove it from the admin series. But so Rena, I think, wants to probably give you a little bit of background about the job and the thoughts of it, of the rewritten position and um, and the way she, she'd like to do the hiring. So, Rena. Thank you so much. And thank you for um, giving me the floor here. Uh, we have struggled to fill our clerk positions. We have two. This is only regarding one right now but be, through the regular administrative clerk pool because m the role within planning and zoning and economic development is extremely technical. It's extremely regulatory oriented. There are skills that, that are complicated. There are implications for not handling regulations properly, including appeals, lawsuits, other things. There's, there's a lot of technical understanding to reading site plans and applications and regulations that while the clerk isn't a full planner, their role is to support the commissions that make policy decisions to file under very strict guidelines um, and to support the planner on that portion of the job in mine on the economic development side um, for those who may not know, the economic development department oversees the entire development process in town. And so what we're struggling with is getting folks that have any kind of understanding and they, when they hear about the job, they're terrified sometimes and then they don't want the job or they get in and they're feeling very stressed, overwhelmed, they're feeling vulnerable because they don't understand the regulatory environment, the legal environment, the documents that they're handling. And they're, it's just, so we've one, had trouble hiring from the pool. Uh, two, we've had trouble keeping the people that have been hired because of the, the technical nature. And three, we've had to spend a lot of money sending them to different kinds of trainings. And we're, so we're working with some, and these are great people, don't get me wrong, but their skills are substandard to what we need and it's hurting the department. So we appealed to Tom some time ago, we've been talking about this for a long time, we've been working on this, to really allow us to certainly assess their computer skills and stuff, but to assess other criteria uh, related to the job. So I had a similar situation when I worked for the city of Bridgeport and I would have to hire off of a hiring list and I wasn't getting the people with the proper writing skills or technical skills um, to do the jobs there. And what the civil service commission allowed me to do there was to create a testing environment that was partially oral, like an interview. And then we rated that interview so we could ascertain certain skills. So in this instance, do they understand what GIS is, geographical information system? Do they know how to use it? Do they, do they understand maps? Do they understand any level of site plans so that you know they can, they can understand when somebody comes in is dropping off an application have they, do they have the site plan right? You know, they're receiving it and they can't receive it if it's not correct, but they have to know what correct is. Now a general clerk, it could take years to train somebody to understand that with no planning background, no GIS background, no land use background, nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? So there are, there are we need better skill set in the candidate pool or no, more appropriate skill set. So we're hoping that we can make this process a bit different so we can attract um, candidates that have the skills we need. So um, I've even, uh, after Tom and I, multiple meetings, I drafted a potential list of questions that could go along with an oral. That certainly I'm not married to those questions, but I was, wanted to give him some examples so that he could, because he's not as from, he, even though he's got a lot of municipal background, 
in all kinds of things. I mean, even he wanted to understand more carefully what kinds of things we need to kind of glean in, in a process, a hiring process. So he has some of those questions in hand. And I'd like the ability to be able to do this so that the person successful in the job, we're successful and we can get good candidates. Um, just to be clear, we also, we do, I mean, on behalf of HR, we do think there's still a admin clerical elements that should be tested through the regular kind of computer testing process. So it's a matter of if, if you allow a certain interviewing process to be part of the ranking of it, um, we, it's the blend of the ranks. I mean, we do think that it, it is clerical. So like Excel and Word and all the stuff that we test should also be tested on this job as well. But when we advertise for a general clerical pool, we're not advertising for people that necessarily have any planning, land use, so forth, like other communities do, because we see the listservs that go out for other communities, and they have an ability to hire their clerks with some land use background and that kind of thing. So it's a subset of those, <clears throat> you know, skills. Yeah, but they need to know how to compose a letter. They need to know Word. They have to have some type of computer yeah. experience. Yeah. That's agree what, to that. Yeah. That's what Tom is trying to say. Yeah. I, Tom and I are already in agreement on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It just it's a. I think it's a blend that that Rena's looking for. But we yeah we yeah. definitely need. I don't know what. I honestly, don't know what uh, percentages rank you would give it. But at this point, but I mean, we definitely it's it is important that they have the basic clerical functions because they're going to provide a clerical function, but. There's got to be some way to mix in the thing like, gee, I don't know, there's no test to give to no GIS as far as I'm aware, right? So or, probably not, but there are questions that we can ask yeah. that, you know, when we've asked, tried to ask it in the interviewing before, like with the candidates off the list, they don't even know what it means. I mean, they're not, they don't, they've never looked at a site plan map. They know these are like general, clear, they, these folks have like no related experience. Um, at all and they and so part of our if someone has gis land use planning background if they have even even um different types of real estate background and those kinds of things that relate to the job that are that they've got concrete skills around regulatory experience i mean everything we do is regulation based and everything that's not done correct under state statute we can be sued for so again you know, when we did the last round of interviews off the clerical test, three of the people really didn't even want the job. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, because then when they heard what it was, and then, you know, um, from there, the other, you know, few candidates were just, they, they just didn't have any skills that related to what we needed. It was gonna be a real stretch. So we're, we're struggling. So, so are we thinking mm -hmm. like, I don't know, 60, 40, 60, the, the basic skills test. And that will, you know, kind of give us, you know, the, the Marianne computerized test and then 40% interview with stand with the uh, other. I tests. would say 90, 10, <laughs> because anyone who has those other skills that I talked about knows how to use a computer. We don't, they're, they're not, craft you know they they have to be able to usually the content of any letter will come from other staff you know but they need to be able to accept plans review do a preliminary review of the applications coming in to make sure that they're meeting all the criteria you know we have situation when we have a staff person come on they're they don't know what to accept or not accept they don't even know how to read a plan they don't know, understand anything related to this. If and, and even if they're applying to this right land use board under the right permits, because they they this is so it's like a foreign language. So, Rena, I want to just give you a, a little bit of a hint about. So, you want some, you want a significant portion to be the testing because you might get a ton of applicants and you don't have the none of us have the capacity to do fifty interviews. Right. So. So you want to have a significant screening process before to, what we're finding is we're getting a lot of people without any skills appropriate to the jobs applying for jobs these days. Mm -hmm. 
and with all due respect to everybody, but you know, um, so so you do want you need to have a significant number to be that testing because that allows us to screen out for you so that you're not spending six months interviewing people. <laughs> right. So that's why I was suggesting like a 60%. I mean, it could be a 50-50, I don't care, but as long as as long as there is has to be a significant number for us to screen people out for you. So like Marianne will give a test and they'll come in and and if they don't know Excel, they don't make it to your level. That, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think when you do a generalist test, you get a lot of applicants. When you're looking at something that's more skill specific to an area, you know, if, if we get a lot of applicants, that's not a bad thing. That would actually probably be good. Not 50, but and we don't want to interview everybody. So there has to be, you know, a thing. A I think yeah, there us, has to be a screening somewhere. There has yes. to be a screening. So the ability to use Word, um, to use Outlook and to use Excel are, are very important. But if anyone knows how to use GIS, that's a highly technical, um, you can do anything. On it. What I'm saying is if you can do GIS and you know what that is, you can do any of that stuff. You have much more advanced skills than that so testing for the basics is important I guess but if we're testing for those other skills they're gonna they're gonna exceed those skills they would never have gotten to that point um, without having those skills so Tom can't the first check off be this particular technical capability right to Rena's point, like, and I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm new to this, but could the first point be like, you, you could do what she just asked, this GS, whatever, and then that's one pile. And if you have a pile, then, you know, then you could go to Word and all those other things, but you want the cream of the crop. And to, to your point, to save people a lot of trouble, just if you get five, that's great. If you don't get enough, then you go to a more general, but in, in this, uh, population, I mean, aren't you ultimately saving more time than what you were saying about like the six months of like, yeah. you know, going down a rabbit hole? Yeah, Marianne, is there, in, in that massive testing module, is there a G, GIS testing? There might be, I, I have to you check. check that? I have so to let, check. Me, let me make sure I'm clear. It's GIS is one piece, mm -hmm. land use, regulatory, those things. If you've dealt with, it's it's a combination of land use skills, GIS skills, because they have to go on the GIS system and look up things and understand what that means. And um, for example, when anybody files a land use application of a certain type, they have to notify abutters, right? Those are within certain feet under um, state statute. So we need to pull a list of who those abutters are. So we do that through the GIS system, okay? So there's a way to do that. You drop a, a box, if you will, in the GIS system and you can pull addresses that do that so that there's a, you know what I mean? So there's all mm -hmm. kinds of things to do that are technical. And somebody that has experience with land use regulation, GIS, that kind of stuff, that would be like this. So example, there's a temporary person that's in the position now, plugging the position. She was referred to us through a professor, a land use, who teaches land use at one of the uh, universities. So she, she understands all of that. But to get somebody else up to speed is going to take us, they got to go to classes, they got to go, you know, it's, it's a lot. So if we get, like you were saying, Allison, a screening that says, do they have any land use background? Do they have any GIS background? Do they have any regulation, you know, regulatory background? Those kinds of things. If we know they have that, then we test them on the computer stuff. That That's how I think it would work. Cause then you're, you know. Miriam, what do you think? Okay, well, first of all, what we have to do is have some type of experience and training. I see where the qualification profile is. Usually when we have a bachelor's degree, it's, it's specific. It's, um, you know, if it's an accounting position, it has to be a, a BA in accounting or BA in finance. 
this just says bachelor's degree. So right there, you're gonna get a lot of people that have bachelor degrees that will be qualified. So in the experience and training, you need to be specific in what the, the experience and training should be. If you put down knowledge of urban planning, GIS, land use law, when I go through all the applications, if they don't have that, they're disqualified. Right. So part of my job is to qualify and disqualify people. So that's why the experience and training needs to be specific so I can determine who's qualified and who's not. When they advertise, do they put the skills we're looking for in there in the yes. advertisement? Okay, so job, right, we post the job description. Uh -huh. And my job is when we close is to look at every application and to see if they're qualified. So if they have no education, they're, they're disqualified. Uh -huh. So that's why I need to know exactly what the qualifications are for the job. So in our field, there are multiple bachelor's degrees that touch the work we do. So mm -hmm. that's the difference between accounting and finance, where if you get an accounting, finance, or a business degree, probably those are your three relevant degrees. In economic development and land use, you can have a planning degree, you can have an urban design degree, you can have uh, you know, a, a degree in you know, economics and you know, other things. It's, there's, there's multiple ways that you can you know, learn this. So it's not just like, you know, they have all different kinds of, you know, of uh, degrees popping up around, around planning and urban design and land use and economic development. There, there's a million different degree programs that, that are related to that. Yeah, well, so you could put a bachelor's, you know, in economics or related field would be- so You can only put one? I mean, I've worked oh. in other places where we were able to say like bachelor's degree in X, Y, Z. Oh yeah, you could. Well, yeah. that's why when I said related field, that means all the other ones mm -hmm. that you just mentioned. But if you yeah. want to be specific, yeah, you could put them all down, but that's why we say related field. So anything that's related, right, Tom? We've done that. I think what, Mar what Marion is trying, she's trying to prevent like, you know, people that have no business applying, you know, getting past that's, right. yes, that's right. You, you want them out. You don't yeah. want to even have them go through the process. It's just a waste of our time. We can list like a few degree programs that are relevant and then say, and other related degrees. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, who knows what UB is coming out with next that relates to planning and urban design and what they're calling it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, if you could do if you do the other related, that leaves us yeah. the flexibility, and we'll. Yeah. I mean, if there's a question, we'll figure it out. Right. You know? If I yeah, if I'm not sure about the degree. I would ask you, Rena. Rena, is this part of you yeah know, economic development? Is this you know? If you say no, I say okay. Then they're they're not included. So um, that's the only thing. If the qualifications were more specific, so we get the people that you want not the people that are not qualified. We don't want them to apply, but you don't want to make it so that you get no applicants either. <laughs> no. I mean, do you feel that you're going to get a bunch of candidates for this? Well, we would put it, we would put it on those, those, we have different industry websites and planning websites and listservs. That's, that's where we would take whatever you post Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you put up and right. we put it to those places. And like I said, we got our temp through a professor mm -hmm. who saw it and talked to one of his graduating students that he thought was exemplary mm -hmm. and had exactly, you know, kind of what we were looking for. So, but in the past, we would not have gotten that kind of candidate easily because it was just a general clerk test. So why would this person be applying for that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does so let's get back to, to that. Sorry, sorry, does it make sense to advertise to the local colleges and send them the job description that yes. they might have, you know, they might have recent graduates or know of people who have this experience? Yes. So I have a list on my economic development website and our business resource directory of all the college career centers. 
-hmm. and we can we can send it to them it would in this new in this new setup but in the past i would really wouldn't have sent it because it was more a general clerical pool. yeah once Anyone we put it on neogov you can copy it and paste it and send it off to the yeah school. that'd be great yeah all right so what are we thinking Marianne, Marianne, suggestion about the percentages, the rank, the rate, rankings, sorry. So what type of testing, Word, do they use Excel spreadsheets for anything? Really? Yeah, our Excel is very important. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Word, Excel, mm -hmm. everybody needs to use Outlook nowadays. Okay. That's okay. what we use yeah. at our office for our calendars. So that's not yeah. a, we, you know, not a big deal, but you know, they have to know how to use that. Um, but Word and Excel, primarily like in terms of just general Microsoft skills, mm -hmm. but then, uh, you know, any other skills they have that support land use planning, economic development, like GIS skills. Okay. okay. So this is my suggestion. It's, you know, it's up to the board, but I would test for Word, Excel, Outlook, and then set up some type of criteria and give them points for urban planning experience, GIS, land use, real estate, grant writing, et cetera, mm -hmm. that we could base it on experience and training. Mm -hmm. Because I don't anticipate 50 people applying for this. I really don't. No, because it's more specialized to the field. I mean, depending on the salary, you know, the salaries high enough, I'm sure you'll, you'll probably get more people interested, but, um, you know, right now, the way I see it is that if you do the, the generalization of the functions in the job description, I, I really don't think you need a lot of, a lot of candidates, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, do you feel there's a lot of people out there with those kinds of, um, you know, criterias? Well, I think if we go to the universities, we'll get a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, general advertising, no, you're not gonna get that too much, but I think if we put it up on all the planning sites mm -hmm. um, and we put it to the career counseling centers or any connections that we have in the universities, cause you know, like we have some, cause mm -hmm. um, Rob and I deal with universities for other reasons. So, uh, you know, then we'll get, we'll get candidates. I mean, like I said, that's how we got our temp. Yeah. Through that process. I mean, do you want to do 50, 50, 50%? 50 yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's. And then do good. experience and training. If they have yeah. all the experience and training that you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that, um, that sounds like a good, do you want to add oral interview into there? Too? Yeah, we want an oral interview, definitely. All right. You well, know. in oral, there's no such thing as an oral interview. There's an oral examination, and then there's an interview by the department head at the end. Right. Okay. So, an in interview. Right. Tom. Yeah, I think I think Rena. So um, Rena want I think wants to be has an interview done before the fifty before the five, the top ranked five go to her. I think that's what the what, what, what did saying, you right? say that again? What did you say? I'm sorry. Yeah, once again, sorry. Uh -huh. um, the uh -huh. the uh, I think Rena is looking for the interview test to be done uh, before the rankings are given to to Rena for the last five candidates. I think that's what you're saying, Rena, right? I'm not following that exactly. What you... So general, generally what would happen is civil service would do the rankings and then you would get the top five candidates and then you get I, to choose. After we do the testing and the experience and training, we would come with a final score, combine the testing and experience and training, and then Rena would get the top five candidates. And then you can interview and choose from the top five. But I think, Rena, what I mean, I think what you're saying, Rena, is you want the in, in interview to suss out some of these skills before the like as part of the ranking, right? Yeah. So what we did in Bridgeport was the oral examination was an interview. Everyone was asked like the same questions. 
there was a little panel and then they we ranked the people who you know we ranked their oral interview or whatever you're calling it, oral test and then um they tested for any other skills. And in, in that instance, there was a writing test, but that was a different job. So, I, but let's say in this instance, there was a computer test. Um, after that, that's how we did it in Bridgeport so that we knew that they had the basic skills that we need for the job before they went through a computer test that they, you know, so it's it, it, six, so as long as we're able to tap a qualified applicant pool I, I'm flexible as to what the best way to do this is um, you know I if you Rita I will say that if you do as Marianne says by you giving points for the identified things like GIS and things like that as long as you and I are specific in what those those things are I mean you probably will screen well to get yeah. to you the best five I mean I really yeah. do think that's going to happen yeah, I think so too. So I think I do think you could probably. I mean, it's up to you. Tell us what you want, but I mean, I think the fifty-fifty. I think would actually work for you on this one. Yeah, and you would get to interview the top five candidates. Yeah, I think I think so. I, I think it's all. I, I think that you guys. I get to defer to you and Marianne who do this for a living. Um, I dabble in you know this, so I just I'm going to defer. But I think that the key is getting um, the qualified candidate pool is the key and and in a big lump clerical test we're just not getting it and it's really frustrating and it's costing a lot of time energy and production so i think if we have this more tailored whichever way we get at it we're going to get the right skill sets i'm pretty sure so i'm open to whatever so so let's do it the way that marianne said it the 50 yeah. 50 and then we will Rena, you will make sure that we we are locking exactly what the point system is so that you, you're getting what you think you need out of that. Okay. Take, take a good look at the job description and make sure it's specific because that's what I go by when I qualify and disqualify candidates. Okay, I'll look at it again. They have to have all those components. And if they don't, they're disqualified. Right, right. So I I I had drafted it but redrafted it. So what you're, I don't, I think that's what you're looking at now, but yeah, I will look at it draft. And I'll look at the um, bachelor degree section mm -hmm. again too. So when do you need that back from me by Tom? Whenever you, so once once the commission takes a vote, whatever, whenever you get it to us definitively, that's when we can post it. Now, I still have to negotiate the salary. Right, the yeah. Year, so, <laughs> that, so that is a... I'm That's hoping tomorrow will be that answer, but we'll see if we, we're going to battle on that. They asked for a lot of money, Rena, but that's a separate conversation you and I will have. That's crazy. So we'll, I can we'll tell talk you offline. I can tell you, though, that I don't think the salary that it's at now is that far off of other communities. So, yeah. You know, um, but the other thing I want to mention is, and I know this isn't the right place, but we also have another position in the office that's in the same situation. So, so, so does the, does, what does the commission think? I mean, we've been doing a lot of talking. <laughs> well, the, voting for this position? Yes, do you, do you agree with where we've just come to the 50-50? 50-50, I, I personally do, I do, yeah. Barbara's got her hand up. I see her. Oh, fake I do too. Hand. I do too. I see, I yeah. see your fake hand over there in the corner. I don't know what that hand's doing above my oh, face. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't hear anything before. I've got a brand brand new computer, first day, and so I had to figure out where the volume controls were, everything. But okay. now I can hear and I can talk. Okay, great. And Barbara, you sound great, by the way. There's no <laughs> echo, no anything. You sound fantastic. Oh, good. No echoing and stuff, huh? Yeah. You needed a new computer. <laughs> so does That's someone in the commission want to make a, a motion about what we talked about? Okay, so I make a motion to uh, test the candidate 50% in a test and then 50% in experience and training. 
Okay. Second that. Okay. Thank you, Alice. And Barbara. And I just have one question. I heard it. To, um, I agree. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Go ahead. Do we need Jill, to vote on, on whether we're, we're removing that from the admin series or we've already done that? That's been negotiated. That's Tom's job. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a union question. So yeah, yeah that's got it. The, the union and I discussed that already. Yes. But good question, Michelle. I like that. Very good question. Yes, very good. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Rena. Tom, um, right. I'll move back to you with the revisions and Marianne. Okay. Okay, thank take, you. take care, Rena. Thank bye you bye. all. Have a great holiday. Okay, thank bye. you. you too. Bye. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Okay, one more position. Yes. Uh, okay, so the health assistant provisional expired uh, the request to advertise, test, and recruit for that position. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that and see how we want to. The percentage we want to do for that as well. Yeah, Marianne, this one's yours. <laughs> yeah, it is. yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, because it it is kind of specific to you know medical that we do run some type of test and then base it on experience and training. You know, you, you want someone who's in the field. So I, I mean. I would say the same thing what we just did with Rena's 50 50 50% 50 of proficiency proficiency online testing and then the other 50% based on their um, you know work experience um, experience and training. Anyone care to Chime in. Want to make a motion. <laughs> That's that fine. Yeah, that works I think for that me. I think that makes That's... a lot of sense. Okay. Sounds good. And is is it the same test? Um, I'm looking at the job description. It says computer literacy, including use of Microsoft Office, is required. So, um. I'm not sure how much, if there's Excel involved with that position. Um, usually it's, it's up to our discretion. So, you know, we could check with the department to see which, um, you know, packages they use the most, whether it be Word and Outlook or, you know, some departments don't even use Excel. So, um, you know, I think we will leave it at the, you know, um, at our at our discretion, discretion, you know, contingent upon our discussions with the department. That makes sense. Yeah, because I don't want to test for something that they don't, don't need. They don't right. Need. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. So does someone want to make a motion for the fifty-fifty? I make a motion. Okay. Second, somebody? Second. Who wants a second? Did, oh, wow. Well, I saw. Yeah, there you go. Got it. Saw some fingers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then Michelle. I guess she can or can vote, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so we're all set with that. All the three positions, is there anything else yep. on that? I think that's it. That's it. Okay, so then the next piece is establishing the dates for our civil service meetings for 2022. Mm -hmm. um, we used to do Wednesdays, right? Yeah, we still do. Yeah, the second Wednesday of the each month. So we could stick with that and just the time. What time is works for everyone? Oh, we got a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Um, it works, right? 
is noon good for everyone? We're willing to do anything, anytime you guys, it's available to you guys. Yeah, whatever, whatever is for best you for you guys, yep. And um, that includes nights, by the way, if you want to yes. do nights. I mean, if you want to go if, back to seven o'clock, that's fine. Anything is good. We'll do anything you guys want on this. Yeah. I actually, I think that days are a little bit easier because you're already in the <laughs> online and in yeah. the mode. The and I, know mode yeah. I, I have young yeah. kids still, so we have sports and things yeah. like that. But yeah, I mean, I could be flexible. It's once a month. It's not a big deal, but yeah. I'm happy to keep it at yeah. noon. Alice? Is it for, if it is like stuck in stone, if we ever wanted to do seven one day and make it a nighttime thing, you couldn't change it? Yeah, we so could. The, so, so, so just one second on FOI. Yeah. So you create a list of regular meetings under the FOI right. and That's that a, allows you to yeah. add things in, and change the agenda, right? If you have a special meeting, like today's meeting is a special meeting, we could not add anything to the agenda today right. Because it was a special meeting, so that is the that is the only yeah. difference between regular regular scheduled meetings and special meetings. Got it. Yeah. So if we changed the noon to seven p.m. on the same day, we would that would still be called a special meeting, Tom. Still be a special yeah. meeting, yeah, because okay. it wasn't uh, yeah. advertised. At right. Time. Right. Okay. But but that being said, we have all the flexibility in the world. I mean, oh, we okay. really do. Whatever you guys want. If I mean, uh, so I like twelve. Okay. Yeah, when we put out for quorum, I mean, we're really just searching for you guys to tell us when you're available. Right. I apologize that we haven't had regular the regular schedule meetings because I haven't been ready to come to you with some of these items. So that's my fault. But we will nothing try about, our best to keep to the regular meetings. Nothing about the world is normal again. So 12 o'clock might be better. Um, what do you think, Barbara? Oh, it's fine. I'm a retired. <laughs> yeah, rub it in. Go ahead, rub it in. Okay, so we'll go with the second Wednesday of each month, and I'll I'll figure it out and I'll list it on the minutes. <clears throat> yeah, we want to uh, vote on that motion. Someone wants to make. Sure, I make the motion that it's the second Wednesday second of every it. month at noon. Okay. And so Michelle. All righty. And then lastly, vote for chair for 2022. Now, even though Ann's not here, you can still vote for her. Well, yeah, Ann, Ann has the chair. She just couldn't make it today. And, and Marianne, I think, said that she expressed interest in remaining the chair, right? Yeah, so, so if you wanted to vote for her, so. so I vote in. Okay. <laughs> <I'm old. laughs> okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure, because I knew she wasn't going to be here if, if she, you know, <clears throat> you could vote for her, but yeah, Tom told me it was okay. Yep. So, and I knew she she was fine with it. So, okay, the awesome. Chair could be any, any member of the commission. Okay, perfect. But I think you do have to take a vote though. Yes. Yeah. So who wants to make a motion? I make a motion for Ann to remain as the chair. Okay. Second? Anybody? Second it? Second. Oh, please, someone else. Barb. Mm -hmm. Third. Okay. Okay. So it's 107. Someone wants to make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. Unanimously adjourned at yes. 1 07 p.m. Happy holidays. Awesome. Everybody. Yes. Thank happy you. holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy yeah. holidays. We really appreciate your service. Yeah. Stay safe and be well, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.